Most Americans believe there should be a separation between church and state, as was established in the Bill of Rights. But in recent years, Christian nationalism has made big legal gains in the United States. That's the idea that American identity is linked to Christianity and that Christianity should be written into our laws. A recent study found two-thirds of Americans are skeptical of or reject Christian nationalism. Still, it's finding its way into the country's policies. Our correspondent, Dina Demetrius, takes us to the birthplace of American democracy, Philadelphia, to explain. As soon as I get back in the Oval Office, I'll also immediately end the war on Christians. It's a holy war 40 years in the making on the political right. In our first four years, we appointed nearly 300 federal judges and three great Supreme Court justices. It's gained ground on the battlefield of the judiciary. We have a religious movement in the United States that is feeling emboldened to not only exercise some political power, but to take political power and to control the government. Professor Marcy Hamilton is an expert on the First Amendment's Establishment Clause at the University of Pennsylvania. She's a Christian and author of God versus the Gavel. The Establishment Clause was supposed to create limitations on both church and the government in a way that would make them act in the interest of the public good and not undermine each other. But the conservative Supreme Court has eviscerated the separation of church and state. And Hamilton says RIFRA, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act of 1993, has given federal courts legal footing to rule in favor of religious arguments. It is a prescription to take your faith and say, you have to accommodate me no matter what. In recent years, that religious accommodation was used by the Supreme Court, including in the landmark Hobby Lobby case. There, a conservative Christian employer won the right to remove contraception coverage from his employees' benefits. So when you combine this concept that your faith should control regardless of harm to others, with the removal of the Establishment Clause barriers, and you take those together, Christian nationalism obviously correctly sees an opening for themselves. That opening being taken now with a 900-page Heritage Foundation-led playbook for a conservative presidency called Project 2025. It's couched in theology and outlines methods for greater executive power, potentially replacing 50,000 civil servants with policy loyalists through an executive order, reshaping the DOJ and other agencies. How surprised are you that it's gotten this far? I'm not at all surprised. I've been blowing the whistle since 1997. But right now, the majority of believers in the United States don't believe what this group believes, and so they need to stand up. They need to vote. They need to express their opinions. And they need to understand that being opposed to Christian nationalism is not anti-Christian. Or if a different religious entity wants to assert that power too, right? Precisely. It, it, so if we open the door to Christian nationalism, there's no reason to think that we then won't have battles for other faiths who want to control, whether they want to control a city, a state, or the federal government. The impact of Christian nationalist ideals is already being felt in people's lives. One recent example, the Alabama Supreme Court ruled it illegal to destroy a frozen embryo, saying it is a human, and upending IVF treatments there. Chief Justice Tom Parker used the Bible for his legal opinion. It's where you get issues with Christian nationalism, where you get issues with make America a Christian nation again, um, when there's nothing biblically that calls for us to do that. This union of church and state has created a spiritual chasm in churches. Pastor Chris Anton was fired in 2023 for not condemning LGBTQ youth in a Christian Reformed church. And so whenever we make politics our priority. I think we are abandoning the kingdom of God for the kingdom of America instead, and that, that is a big issue. Hamilton says her own faith has called her to advocate for what she says is the framers' constitutional protections against religious tyranny. What has to happen is these believers over here have to stand up and say, it's my faith that informs me that you can't control me. I see no value 
in giving the high ground solely to one set of believers, that's what opens the door to Christian nationalism. From the birthplace of the U.S. Constitution, I'm Dina Demetrius for Matter of Fact.